All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to calculate a very neat limit involving an integral, namely the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from minus infinity to infinity of n sine of x over n over x times x squared plus 1. And by the way, I found this example on this beautiful blog called math3ma.com and I highly encourage you to check it out because it has some really amazing pictures and super clear explanation. And as I said, the example was taken from this blog, so let's try to cover this. And in order to do this, and it will be clear very soon, let's first calculate the limit of this inside function as n goes to infinity. So let's calculate limit as n goes to infinity of n sine of x over n over x times x squared plus 1. Now you see x over n and n over x, so how about we put both of those together? So limit n goes to infinity of sine of x over n divided by x over n, because you see n over x is 1 over x over n, divided by x squared plus 1. Now, this 1 over x squared plus 1 comes out because uh, it's independent on n. So that becomes 1 over x squared plus 1 limit n goes to infinity of sine of x over n over x over n. Now, no matter how large or small x is, x over n always goes to zero. So this limit is nothing else than the limit as let's say y goes to zero of sine of y over y. So this just becomes 1 over x squared plus 1 and then limit y goes to 0 of sine of y over y. And now, not because of L'Hopital's rule, but because of a different technique in one of my videos, you get that this limit is actually 1. So sine of y over y goes to 1 as y goes to 0. So this whole thing is just 1 over x squared plus 1. So this inside function just goes to 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, let's do a little bit of wishful thinking, which will actually be correct. Suppose, again, mathematician's dream, suppose you can somehow put this limit inside of the integral. Then it turns out we would be done. Here's why. Then we would get the following. This limit of the integral is just the integral of the limit. Limit n goes to infinity of n uh, sine of x over n over x times x squared plus 1 dx. And uh, we just calculated that limit to be 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And the integral of that is easy to calculate because the um, antiderivative is arctangent. So let's say from minus infinity to infinity. And we would get basically arctangent of infinity minus arctangent of minus infinity. But arctangent it has this branch where at infinity it's pi over 2. At minus infinity it's minus pi over 2. So this would give you pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2. It's like a party except with pi. It's a pi t. And <laughs> we get in the end that this answer is pi. Now, we would be done provided we can justify the fact that we can put the limit inside the integral. So for some people, you're done. But again, if you're a pure mathematician, wait for it. The question is, when can you put this integral inside, the limit inside the integral? It turns out there's a beautiful theorem that 
gives you a very elegant way of doing this. And there is another video I've done on this, and that's called the dominated convergence theorem. And it says the following. Suppose you have a sequence of functions fn that converges to f pointwise. So fn of x goes to f of x. And moreover, somehow the fn's, they're dominated by a function g that is integrable. So suppose you have some weird functions fn that are dominated or less than or equal, if you want, by a function g, where g is integrable. So with integral of g is finite, then if those conditions hold, you can actually pass into the limit. So then limit n goes to infinity of the integral of fn of x, the x equals to the integral of f, so the integral of the limits. So in other words, you can just pass under the integral, and that's what's called the celebrated dominated convergence theorem. And the beautiful thing is, we've done most of the work, because what have we found? We found this fn, which is n times sine of x over n over x times x squared plus 1, we found that pointwise it converges to 1 over x squared plus 1. So that is your function f. And we cheated a little bit. We calculated the limit of the integrals, or I guess we calculated the integral of the limit. We found it to be pi. So the only thing we still need to justify is to find a function that dominates all the fn's. But it turns out this is not very hard because remember the following identity. Sine of x is less than or equal to x. So uh, for some type of people, you put equal, but again, no, not in the, on this channel. And um, this you can just show using the, you know, just take the difference and take the derivatives. And more, more, uh, moreover, you also get sine of x is less than or equal to x. So in particular, absolute value of sine of x is less than or equal to absolute value of x. Okay. And, um, and why is this useful? Because you can do the same thing with x over n, and you get absolute value of sine of x over n is less than or equal to absolute value of x over n. If you want, like this. And now, so what does that become? So now let's calculate fn of x. Again, that becomes absolute value of n over x times absolute value of sine of x over n over absolute value of x squared plus 1, which is just x squared plus 1. But using this identity, we get this is less than or equal to n over x. And then um, this thing. So sine of x over n is less than or equal to x over n in absolute value. And 1 over x squared plus 1. This magically cancels out, and you get 1 over x squared plus 1. So in other words, our functions fn are dominated by this function g, but we've shown, actually by coincidence, that the integral of g is finite, it's just pi. So in the end, we do get that those functions, they converge pointwise to this function, and they're dominated by an integrable function g. And therefore, by what we had before, the limit of the integrals is just the integral of the limit function, which is pi. So rigorously, I've shown that you, you calculate that integral, and you can pass to the limit. And it's all because of the beauty of the dominated convergence theorem, which makes things very simple, uh, you know, simply, uh, simple to verify. 
All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.